Gemara says that although the Torah has a couple of verses that say that the Banim, the sons, are not going to suffer for the parents' sins, the Gemara says the opposite. The Gemara says that actually there are cases that the sons or daughters, chas v'shalom, will suffer for the parents' sins. So how can we explain it? The answer is, Rabotai, is that the Gemara explains, if the son or daughter repeats the parents' sins, if they repeat the parents' sins, then they get punished for both. If they don't, they get rewarded for not. Why? Why is it our fault? Because Hashem Barach put himself, put a piece of himself inside you. Inside you is a piece of Hashem, meaning there's no such thing as a person who doesn't have a conscience. There's no such thing. You may have evil intentions, you may have desires you can't overcome, but nonetheless, everyone has a conscience. Everyone knows the truth. Everyone knows. Inside us, we all know whether it's right or wrong. Everyone knows. No one in their right mind thinks that murder is a good thing to do. You don't need the Torah for that. No one in their right mind thinks that stealing is a good, is a good sign of a positive person, of someone that's honest. No one thinks such things. You don't need the Torah for that. So Hashem told us, I put a piece of myself inside you to make sure that you have this conscience. And the reason why is because even if you see your parents sinning, you're going to know it's wrong. So you're not going to be able to go up to Shamayim after 120 and say, hey, my father was a sinner, so I continued his ways. My mother was a sinner, so I continued her ways. There's no such thing. There's no such excuse. And the reason why is because if you look at some of the major sages, some of the major personalities in our Torah, they didn't exactly come from the greatest families. If this excuse would have been a good excuse in Shemaim, then Terach would have been viewed as an idol worshiper. He would have been viewed as a good father. But in reality, he was an idol worshiper until he did tshuva. Until he did tshuva, he was an idol worshiper. But nonetheless, Avraham Avinu could have used the excuse and said, listen, my father's not only an idol worshiper, he's the Walmart of idol worship. He sells all the idols. So I have an excuse. Why do I need to become monotheistic? Didn't use that excuse. Another example is that there was a person that his brother was a giant, a giant in righteousness. His father was Gdolado, bigger giant. His grandfather, even a bigger giant. But he, there's a verse in the Torah, it says, et Esav Saneti. His name was Esav, and God specifically says, him, I hate him. What do you mean? Paro killed Jews, killed Am Yisrael. He doesn't say he hates him. Nebuchadnezzar killed millions. He doesn't say he hates them. A lot of people were wicked. He doesn't say he hates them. But Esav, I, Esav, I hate him. Why is Esav worse than Nebuchadnezzar? Worse than Paro? Worse than anyone in history? Why? Because Esav knew the truth. Esav knew his brother was a tzaddik, Yaakov. His father, Yitzchak, tzaddik. His grandfather, Avram, all the reasons in the world to do good, but he still chose otherwise. He still chose otherwise. The fact that he knew and still didn't do, et esav saneti. That's why Hashem only allowed his head to be buried in Me'arat HaMachpelah and not the rest of his body. Because his head knew Torah, his body just didn't do it. And for that, my friends, we need to understand that when we go up to Shamaim, there's no excuses. There's no excuses because we have both arguments in the Torah. Ones that had bad parents and ones that had good parents. In both cases, you have the opposite happening. Terach wasn't exactly the best, but his son was Avram. Why? Avram had a conscience and he realized the truth is, Hashem Barach. I'm sticking to him. But you're going to go on fire, doesn't matter. You're going to go on fire, doesn't matter. You're going to go on fire, doesn't matter. I'm going with the truth. Why? My conscience tells me that's what I have to do. That's the emet, I'm sticking to it. Esav, my father is a tzaddik, he's a rabbi. My grandfather's a rabbi. Everybody's father's a rabbi. Okay, what about you? He's in Ghana, then what about you? No, but my father, your father's not going to help you. Your grandfather's not going to help you. All the, the only thing that can help you is you. Are you going to be Esav or are you going to be Yaakov? That's your choice. Bezat Hashem, we all choose to be Yaakov.